Hey everyone, welcome to the video for this piece, which is inspired by the Queen of Spades. It's actually also inspired by the YouTube Artist Collective, which I'm not a member of sadly because my channel is way, way too small. They're a group of artists on YouTube who collaborate every few months to create art based on a theme voted on by the community. Even though I'm not a member, they do allow the community to create unofficial art and videos based on the theme, so that's what I'm doing today. The theme voted on by the YTAC Facebook group was tarot cards, but they expanded the theme to be cards of all fortunes, fables, and fates. That's why this card is based on a playing card. I will link the Facebook group down below in case you've never heard of them and want to check out the actual members of the group, though doing a search on YouTube should also help you find them. This was done super last minute. I actually wasn't originally going to do a video based on the YTAC theme, but I had a random strike of inspiration in the middle of the night when I was trying to sleep. You know, when inspiration always strikes. Usually I fall asleep and forget whatever I was thinking about, but this time I actually remembered. As per usual, my mental image of what this piece would look like didn't take into consideration how to actually lay it out. Originally, her hips were going to be merged together like some kind of human cat dog thing, but it wasn't really working out that way, so it definitely changed a lot as I went through the sketching process. The Queen of Spades has always been my favorite playing card. Is that weird to have a favorite playing card? Let me know down below if you have a favorite playing card because I'd be interested to know if I'm the only one. Playing cards are so unassuming. You can find them anywhere. Grocery stores, dollar stores, convenience stores, probably Amazon. But they can have hidden meanings as well. Cardomancy is a practice that basically means to read cards. The most common cards in the Western world to be read are tarot cards. I love tarot, and I think it's gotten this weird rap as being a supernatural thing, but it doesn't need to be. It can be a tool for understanding yourself, especially your subconscious. Cardomancy is used to gain insight into your past, present, and future. The person reading your tarot cards, or the little booklet they came with, or whatever random website you googled, will give a description of the card's meaning, but it's up to you to translate that meaning into your own life and what it could mean. By the way, I do regret not taking this chance to create art based on tarot cards, but as I mentioned, I didn't originally plan on creating an unofficial YTAC video, it just sort of happened. Playing cards can be read just the same as tarot cards, and each has a hidden meaning. The Queen of Spades is usually considered unlucky in a lot of games, but in Cartomancy, she's an intelligent woman inspired by Pallas Athena, the goddess of wisdom. She's practical and organized, powerful and independent. I don't know if any of that comes across in this art particularly well, but I did try to use a lot of the card's symbolism in creating this piece. This is an unusual piece in that I did ink it before I finalized the layout. Normally, I finish a sketch and make sure the composition is fine before I ink. That way, I don't end up having to re-ink parts that aren't final or fix things after I've started inking them. But I knew I didn't want to ink her two halves separately and therefore have to ink her twice. I tried to keep the lines stylized and with varied line weights, but not so varied that they implied where the shadows and light would be coming from. Largely because I didn't know how I would be lighting her two halves. Should they share one primary light source between them, or should the light source be mirrored between the two halves? If it's that last one, that means I'd only have to color her once too, which seems kind of lazy in hindsight. With the layout finalized, I did redraw one of her hands so she wasn't entirely a mirror of herself on both sides, and so it appears both halves of her has a hand on the other, giving them a connection and a subtle difference between the two. 
which of course meant I needed to color her with the same primary light source so the hands crossing over each half wouldn't look out of place, which is one of the bizarrest aspects of working on this piece and the trickiest, making sure I'm aware of my light source even when the image is rotated entirely around. The color scheme was another tricky thing for a very different reason. Playing cards tend to just be the same colors, red, gold, black, and sometimes blue, and they have been for decades. It's not very often they deviate, probably since they're created in such bulk that it's cheaper to only use three or four colors of ink in printing. This severely limited my ability to be original in her color scheme. I didn't want her to look too far removed from the original playing cards since I'd already given her such a different look from the cards in terms of her clothing and appearance. Also, I totally winged the hair. It probably shows. I had no idea what kind of hairstyle to give her, so it ended up as that weird curly bob. Actually, a lot of her design definitely seems inspired by Nair near Automata, which I've not played, but I'm in love with the aesthetic and the setting of. Now that I've said it, if you weren't already thinking it, you're definitely thinking it now, and now it can't be unseen. Sorry. Oh, another weird thing, okay, maybe it's a stupid thing, that I dealt with is that once I started working on the art in Procreate, I didn't realize which side was up. I had named the layers in Photoshop, which is where I created the layout and put in the spade symbols and the letters Q, but when I imported it into Procreate, it must have flipped it, and at the time I thought it flipped the art as a whole somehow, so I renamed the layers and worked on them as is. I did the original flats really, really late at night, and I probably shouldn't have. When you change the rotation of your iPad, Procreate's interface, or UI, will automatically rotate to compensate, but the art stays where it is, which you would think would make it really easy to understand which side is up, but nope, it was really hard for some reason. I should have added my signature a lot sooner to the inks on the top half to give me some idea which way is up. Signatures can be useful, guys. I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned this in past videos, but I tend to prefer a soft, diffuse style for coloring my art. I like the juxtaposition against my hard inking style. With the way I do my line art, if I did a looser, painterly style, it would probably look really awkward and messy. Not that I've ever tried it, I just don't think a painting style like Loish's would look as nice with sharp black lines. My coloring style is more inspired by comics in that the soft gradients and the airbrushing complements the harshness of the line art and all the blacks. At least, I think so. I hope so. My Procreate files are usually really big and don't offer much for layers, which can be limiting. This particular canvas only allows for about six layers maximum, which is typical for me. The shading is in a layer above the flats, and I usually use a medium dark color that's fairly saturated, like a cobalt blue or indigo, and then play with layer styles to get the effect I want. When you use the same or similar color for shadows, it tends to harmonize the whole piece. I, of course, adjust the opacity so the shadows aren't as harsh or to better suit whatever setting the particular art is in. I then go in and touch up places where there might need to be more contrast. I also add another layer set to color to add blushing or other shades to the shadows where necessary so it's not as flat. <laughs> 